Good morning. I'm Father Rob Slocum, priest in partnership for the Church of the Ascension Episcopal Church in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And we're in the Slocum Chapel to celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. I want to offer thanks to Joe Botts for preparing our church bulletin. And my wife, Victoria, will be assisting with our liturgy. And we will begin. Again, it's the second Sunday of Advent. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 85, we'll say it by half verse, breaking at the asterisk. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. And blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I say, What shall I cry? All the people are grass. Their con constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good things. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. 
Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for them. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mechanical 9. Surely it is God who saves me. I, I will trust, trust in him and not be afraid. afraid. For, For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Second Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be lend leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening for the coming of God, because because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and elements will melt, melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mechanical 15. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For, for he, he has looked with favor on, on his lowly servant. servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. 
I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He, he has come, come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Advent. Advent is the season that we're in, and we can consider Advent past, Advent present, Advent to come the past advent, the advent of our Lord, the fulfillment of the prophetic expectation, the coming of the Messiah. There was a long-standing expectation in Judaism. We hear it in the words of the prophet Isaiah, who we have listened to already today, of, of the coming one, and the, prepare the way, make the path straight. And then we hear what it will mean when the Messiah comes. And so that was written before the coming of Jesus as anticipatory of the coming of the Messiah. And we as Christians affirm that Jesus is the Messiah and that his advent was the first coming of the Messiah. Uh, what to expect when the Messiah comes? There are many prophetic writings. I want to share another. Isaiah, of course, is not the only one of the, uh, the prophets. I'm reading now from the book of, of Micah, chapter 4. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. And then Micah goes on to say, In that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather those who have been driven away and those whom I have afflicted. The lame I will make the remnant and those who were cast off a strong nation, and the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion, now and forevermore. So what is this telling us about this coming of the Messiah on that day, that day when these things will be fulfilled? It'll be a time of, of truth. It'll be a time of reconciliation. It'll be a time of justice. It'll be a time when the weak are taken care of and raised up. And that is what Jesus brings. That is what Jesus brings, that he will call for that. He will call for truth. He will call for reconciliation. He will call for the raising up of the weak and, and the sharing of all that we have. And we 
look forward to the fulfillment of that. So if we can talk about the historic advent of Jesus some 2,000 plus years ago, he came. He came. He came as the ultimate expression of God's love for us, that God the Son comes among us, fully human, fully divine. God so loves the world that God sends God's own Son into the world so that we may not perish, but may be redeemed, may be lifted up, may be brought to completion. And that's what the Advent does. That's what the Advent does. But the Advent isn't just an historic event. It's something that happened 2,000 years ago. The Advent is happening now as, as our Lord comes to each of us, as God is with us and God draws us together. And whenever we are gathered together in whatever way, even, even through technology, even as we pray together, uh, those that we see and those that we don't see, those that we are in contact with and those who have gone before us or are absent from us, but yet God calls all of us together. And so the Advent continues the body of Christ in the world. We, the church, the body of Christ in the world, and the Advent continues with us. But we always have to remember that we're not just talking about something out beyond the clouds or some kind of pie in the sky by and by. That's not our faith. We pray every time we get together, we pray the Lord's Prayer that the God's kingdom uh, will be on earth as in heaven, that we pray for the completion of God's love and God's presence with us, among us, and in this world, not just out there somewhere. So in the meantime, we are called to do everything that we can to assist this Advent, to enable this Advent, to help it to be, to let it be a reality, not just a dream or a fable or a myth or a fancy, but a reality in our world so that our world may be a world of truth and a world of reconciliation, a world of justice, a world of hope, a world where God's love is made known, where the weak are raised up and the, the, the hurting are healed and the broken are bound together in love and we all may know the glory of God. And that's what we look for. We look for the glory of God's advent, the historic advent that we celebrate. Jesus came. Jesus came into the world, and so we anticipate our celebration of his birth, and we anticipate our celebration of the teaching and the, the redeeming and the sacrificing and the raising and the resurrecting, and we celebrate that. But we also celebrate the continuing advent of God's presence in our lives today. And we also look forward to the consummation of God's glory that day when all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well, the completion of all in God, the second coming, the coming in power and glory. But in the meantime, we seek to do everything that we can to help that to become a reality even now in our midst, in our lives, in a time of pandemic, in a time of division, in a time of confusion. doesn't matter. God is with us. And there's more in God than anything else will take away. More hope in God than any brokenness, any loneliness, any confusion, panic, dread, that God is bigger than all of it. And God is with us. And we celebrate his presence. We celebrate God's advent in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we consider the renewal and mission of our church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayers of the people are intercession form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for all needs and those of others. I ask your prayers for those who've gone before us, Brian Ratcliffe, and Orrin Rawlings. We celebrate the birthdays of Mary V. Ratliff and Sam Razor. We ask special prayers for Walker, Yancey, Julia, April, Betty, Jim, Norm, Mabel, Virginia, Ryan, Pat, DeFord, Faye, Cindy, Suzanne, Patty, Sue, Bonnie, Michael, Kenny, Judy, Shirley, Dwight, Gail, Kathy, Susanna, Lee, Heather, Teresa, Gina, Corbin, Jessica, Patrick, Dana, Lisa, Robin, Bill and Brenda, Josh, Anna, Christy, Lance, Ron, Steve, Danny, Beverly, Luke, Abby, Cynthia, Brenda, Diane, Anthony, James, Barbara, Kathy, Lucas, Sebastian, Sandy, the Brown family, Jocelyn, Julie, Sally, Thelma, Chuck, Lori, Josh, Andy and Laura and Kim, as well as all those who suffer. We also remember those in the armed services, both at home and abroad, and we remember as well all who've suffered or continue to suffer as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, including Randy, Melanie, Jack, and Vicki. We pray also for 
all healthcare workers, first responders, law and enforcement, um, fire departments, store clerks, all those keeping the society going in a time of danger. I ask your prayers for those on our diocesan intercessory prayer list, St. Paul's Church, Newport, the Reverend S. Matthew Young, Rector, the Reverend Deacon Tom Runge, and Reverend Anissa Willis, Assistant Rector. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, servants give, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in, but in our, our lives, by giving up ourselves to your, your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us could do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. And let me invite you to join us for Christian education this morning at 1030 and coffee hour at about 11, both live on Zoom.